Hey, good morning everyone, and welcome to um, Lake Watch. And it's particularly lovely out here this morning. Uh, we didn't get much of a winter, so, you know, the kind of cold that used to go on till about one o'clock in the afternoon doesn't happen. However, the mornings are still just heavenly. I've got a brew. There's a brew there. Oh, there it is. Um, that's the remnants of a previous brew. Uh, also from earlier today. I just couldn't be asked taking the uh, taking the cup in. So uh, look at that, fantastic, isn't it? I've got a couple of friends. P Pete, um, Pete Harris being one of them, who gave up watching the news. And uh, he might be onto something. Because um, I've always been a bit of a news junkie. But over the last year or two, I'm nothing particularly to do with COVID. But um, I found some other sources. Um, YouTube has been brilliant for this. There's a couple of um, a couple of people there trying to do a good job, uh, breaking points and uh, useful idiots, uh, which has Matt Saibi on it. He's fantastic. But even those are proving to be stressful because because I use Twitter, I can't avoid seeing the kind of main narrative about lots of things because it's always there and there's a shallowness of understanding that I find absolutely infuriating and that's because I'm using some of the more kind of younger they're definitely younger sources and it's given me quite a bit of hope um, in some ways that um, particularly I'd say Millennials and slightly above millennial age are just not having the mainstream news, hence the success of these online platforms that are just blowing CNN and MSNBC and Fox, etc. out of the water. There's definitely an age difference in uh, in who's watching. And the the... the channels that I mentioned do get on my tits because they go on about boomers and I find that offensive even though I'm kind of not quite one. 64 was the last year to qualify for a boomer but I've got nothing in common with boomers um, you know my music's not you know Woodstock and stuff like that I like that music you know and I love Zeppelin and things like that but the music that defines my generation is the Pistols and the Clash and stuff like that so you know and our battles were different. We were fighting against apartheid, um, Clause 28, Thatcher's anti-gay legislation, the miners' strike, and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm not... I don't feel like a boomer. And so the younger news is, is kind of really appealing. However, it winds me up the same... Not in the same way, but it winds me up because... I also see the narrative that most people are getting and assuming is true. And I should include the BBC in that. This is not about COVID. I've got some friends who have just disappeared down the COVID rabbit hole in both directions. And, you know, I'm not getting into it. Um, but this is about almost everything, and particularly this week, about Ukraine. There is a shallowness of understanding about what's going on there that beggars belief. Um, I posted something earlier from uh, uh, from John Pilger, who, you know, you just have to respect because his track record's second to none. And, um, you know, very few people understand what's going on with it. And it doesn't mean I'm good because I do. It just means that I'm informed from different sources and that are equally credible. In fact, way more credible than a narrative that we're being given from the mainstream. Don't worry, I'm not going to go all QAnon and conspiracy. This is just me talking, and I don't do things like that, you know. But um, we we have a Cuban missile crisis in reverse. And Flossie, what are you doing? Are you even thinking of going in the lake? Because don't, Flossie. No. Come on. Thank you. <laughs> but that was me being all serious 
and uh, probably disappearing up my own arsehole, but we were beautifully interrupted and stopped by Flossie. Anyway, what's my point? I haven't got a point. You know me. I'm doing late watch. It's just a rambling nonsense. However, um, just, uh, you know, the world's on the brink of destruction again, maybe. And I don't trust any of these fuckwits that we've elected in any country to uh, to make the right decisions these days. So, um, you know, it's a worry. Get informed about it. Because to stop this happening, we're going to have to take to the streets in the millions. Pretty much like we did when we did stop the Syrian invasion. We did it once before and we did it again. And we really need to take to the streets now and say, fucking knock it off. No one wants this. So fuck off. Anyway, here endeth the lecture. And uh, what a lovely interruption by the beautiful friend of the show, Miss Flossie Fisher. Anyway, I hope you're all doing fantastically well. And life is wonderful and marvellous. And I love you all. All of you. Bye.